four two. All right. Get that thing here real quick. Fill up. All right. Got an over under hand here. Imagine you can pick up those piles, another little one here in the baseline, pick them all up and throw them in there, run them out in left center field or something, spread them out, out in the dirt, boarding track. Very nice piece of machinery you got there. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work 100% of the time. Oh, is that right? So uh -huh. Luck is, luck is with us today and that it, it does work <laughs> as well as we can. Um, okay, I'm going to just have you count to ten real quick. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten passes. Do a little chat and you... Okay, wait just a sec before we start oh, here. No you better. Thank you. That just isn't really pocket full of everything else. Ooh, glasses there, okay. Okay, we're all right. What's your name? My name's Alan. Alan. Alex Webster, work at the Alex Webster. Webster. video office with uh -huh. uh, Ryan and Scott. Oh, you're from up there. Yeah, Wheels. way, way up there. No one the ever Wheels, yeah. 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 Used to do the radio a couple of years ago. Yeah, sure. Not familiar to you at all, but um, basically what we're doing, just doing a, uh, we had the TV show that turns them into gray, and we're just uh, doing a little story on it. Sure. And uh, so I guess we'll just ask you a few questions. I, sure. I guess the first one would be, uh, what's... Uh, if there is any one memory that uh, kind of stands out more than any other in, in your time as a player, coach? Well, well, I think my memories is putting on the uniform every day and coaching the Cougs. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of those days, of course, but I think that's always kind of the top thrill is getting out of the classroom I used to teach or all the other paper biz work we've got today. And about 1.30, Hustling on down to the locker room, putting on the uni, and going out and coaching the Cougars today. It's kind of a separate day. It's kind of a different day. It's a fun day that from then on, usually. And and so uh, I kind of consider that as one of my top memories. Uh, today was maybe a little bit more than others, pulling on the old uni for the last practice. And, uh, you know, we're fighting a little bit of weather here today, as you can see, but that's not unusual either. So um, as being our last practice, and I'm, we've got a big coaches, uh, or the, we have a party for the kids at our place tonight, so jamming all this together. We've been out on a anti-drug and alcohol and tobacco program all morning, been out all over the county, been out to uh, La Crosse and, and Endicott and St. John's, and it's just been a very busy day so far, but it's fun when you go out to practice, that's what I'm trying to get across. How do you uh, first re recall ever being getting involved with baseball? It was baseball. Oh, yeah. well, I mean, when I was a little kid. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. My dad was a baseball player, so I pro baseball player, and and uh, of course we got pictures of. I think every Brayton there ever was has got a picture in his baseball uni. I mean, my grandpa's, my great grandpa's, and and all those, and my brothers, and and uh, so. Um, I think we've all been baseball players, and we've got pictures of me and my dad when I could hardly stand up, you know, with a baseball hat and a mitt on. But uh, I think I remember probably basically was he used to pitch to me. He pitched every weekend in the summer, and so on a Wednesday was kind of his workout day. So he pitched to me, and I was probably seven, eight years old. And I remember the neighborhood ladies were always on, you know, look at that guy throwing that ball that hard at that little kid and all this sort of thing. I think if, if it was today, he'd probably get caught for child and thrown in jail for child abuse. But uh, I remember those days, and of course I remember a lot of you know, we played a lot of baseball after supper at night. We didn't have TV in those days, and maybe not even a radio. And uh, there were six of us kids, and uh, so we and our dad, and we all played baseball practically every night. Neighbor kids come in from miles around, and then as it went on. I started practicing with you know he had a he had a what we call a semi-pro team or community team, and I started practicing when I was eight or nine or. 10 years old. I remember one time when a guy hit this big high pop fly and he was a one-armed guy. I used to chase those pop flies. I was probably eight, nine years old. And uh, so I always could handle a mitt pretty good that way. And uh, one night I was wrestling with a kid afterwards and this kid was older than I was and just beat me up pretty good. And so he let me up and when he let me up, I took a run at him. I, I used an old war cry of uh, Leo Lassen who used to broadcast for the 
old Seattle Indians, and one of them was, you know, she got in the late innings, and the old Seattle Indians started scoring some runs. He used to, he used to say, hang on to those rocking chairs. This game isn't over yet, you know. So I would run at this kid, and he stuck his hands out like that and just hit me in the chest. I went up backwards, and I come down on my arm, and I just located my, my elbow. And, of course, we didn't have doctors. My dad, he took a hold of my shoulder. Another guy took a hold of there and pulled and reduced it, and that was it. Put it back into place, and, and that was it. So I think I've been suffering from that ever since. I've had new shoulders. I've had shoulder trouble. That's why I got out of pro ball, because I couldn't throw anymore. I think it all goes back to when I was about nine years old. <laughs> I was hanging on to those rocking chairs. This game wasn't over yet, but, boy, I, that guy stopped it in a hurry. <laughs> it's a... Uh you're looking at the last couple of days of, of playing baseball uh, today and or tomorrow and the, and the day after. What's the uh, what's the first thing you're going to do right after that? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure I'm going to spend some time with my family. I, you know, I'm. Uh, I mean, just even right after that game, you know, my my all my sons are going to be here. Uh, I think that's wonderful if they get off work and close the place down or whatever and come and you know, one of them's been here practically all the last half of the season. He came down from Juno to. Said I missed a lot of ball games, Dad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make up for him. We'll see every game the Cougars play the rest of this year, which he has. Uh, the other one, he has uh, his own business in Tri City, so he can, he can take off if he wants to. And, and the other one is in the lumber. He's a broker, broker down in Tigard, Oregon, and he's kind of his own boss too. So they'll all be here uh, for the last games. I think that's a, a great thing. And maybe my sister might even show up from Concrete, Washington. Who knows? But, uh, of course, my wife will be here, and, uh, you know, I'm playing those last games, and right now it doesn't seem too bad, but I, I, I know what's going to happen. It's going to get tough in that last out mate. It's going to be, of course, I'm trying to win two of these games. You know, if I can win <laughs> two games, I've been trying that now for <clears throat> a week, uh, win two games, it could be, the you know, the, the second most winningest coach, active coach in, in uh, collegiate baseball. Right now I'm third. I'd like to be second, you know, but I want the kids to win the game for themselves. They've had a tough time, and... You know, poor old Brunstead's been hurt all year, and, and uh, it's really hurt us. Uh, Mike Kincaid's really given us, you know, 150%. I think the other kids have, too. We just, and Naomi broke his wrist here two weeks ago. So, you know, you get those injuries, and uh, uh, so, you know, and some of our pitching has been hurt all year. So we just, uh, it's been a tough year for us. But, uh, you know, I didn't think we'd lose as many games as we did, but we have. So now we only got three left. See if we can win two out of three of them. That's what, kind of my goal. Yeah. Which do you think will be harder, right after the uh, last game this year or when baseball season starts again? Uh, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? I don't know. I'm kind of a sentimental guy anyway, so I imagine it isn't going to be too dry around after that last game, you know. And uh, the next year, you know, God only knows what will be happening, you know. I'm, I'm not a young guy. I'm going on 69. I've got two new shoulders and a bad heart, bum leg, you know, and I keep plugging along. Hey, maybe the old guy will come behind me with a side before next year. I, I can't worry about that, but uh, I got to, you know, there's lots of things I want to do, you know. I've been married to the same little gal for 46 years, and 44 of those I've been a baseball coach. Not only a baseball coach, but a football coach, and a basketball coach, and a ski coach, and a bowling coach. You can name it, I've coached a lot of things. And so there's been a lot of times we haven't been together, quite obviously. So we want to spend some, that's our number one goal right now, is to spend some time together. I hope that we can make it go for a little while. Maybe we'll get tired of each other in the first week. <laughs> I doubt that very much. As far as uh, when, you had the Legends weekend a few weeks ago. Was it, it, was, it had to be nice to see all those, uh, well, all those was, guys from the... That was days. super. You know, there was, um, of that 1965 team, there was uh, about a dozen of those here. One of, one of them, uh, those guys, was dead, so he couldn't be here, uh, quite obviously. And the other one has disappeared. So those two guys weren't here, but everybody else, uh, you know, was here. The center fielder, right fielder, first base, second base, shortstop, third base, and catcher, three pitchers. Uh, four pitchers were here off that ball club and a couple of the extras, so uh, that was great to have those guys. Of course, every single one of those guys that came back, regardless of which era it was, and there was quite a pile of them, too. It was a really, it was a, a great tribute to me and a, just a great honor to have these guys show up and be there and see what they were like after that many years. Some of them hasn't been too many years, but uh, it, it's just fun being with them and, and to have them come back and, you know, give them a big hug and, you know, and, and see what they're doing, what their families are doing, how they're doing, and it, it was a great, great experience, no question about it.
How about, uh, I know this is probably a tough question as well, versus uh, being a player or a coach, which has been uh, more rewarding for you? Well, being a player, you, you know, you can make mistakes as a player and uh, you can go out and do better tomorrow. As a coach, these things, uh, they, they kind of grind on you, you know, you, um, your team doesn't do well. And right now, this is probably the worst any team I've ever had of any kind, uh, any place. You know, as far as winning goes, uh, there's a lot of other good things about this club, though, that, you know, that kind of counteract that. But, but as a coach, you know, you can't do anything about it. So it, it gets you kind of, you know, it gets you down inside. But as a player, you know, you can go out and, and have an 0 for an 0 for 4 or something. Hey, tomorrow you're going to go out there again and uh, you got another shot at it. As a coach, and once you lose that game, it's gone forever. And, of course, this year, I mean, I'm not going to be able to come back. I'm, I'm in a conference phone call this morning for an hour and a half with the other guys and you know we're all thinking about tomorrow bettering the league you know getting better players getting going to make the league better not just from a player standpoint but from a lot of ways administrative and otherwise but you know it's the end of the road for me I can't do anything about that now so that that kind of hurts a little bit though I plan to stick around if they'll let me and and uh, try to help uh, bring uh, Cougar baseball maybe back on the level it was a few years ago or just just keep it going good that's what I'd like to do and you've had a lot of uh, a lot of players work their way into uh, professional baseball but uh, has it been more interesting to see the folk guys that don't come back or that didn't make it in the pro ball <laughs> oh, what they're sure. doing now oh sure well you know our, our program for years you know we regulate our program operate our program on on the or the 90% of the guys that don't sign pro. I mean, if you got, say, uh, 35 players out there, I think the most we ever signed one year was 10. See, that's about a third. But usually it'll be four or five guys, maybe six, you know, and maybe only a couple. And, but usually there's always some, you know. And, but our program has to be relegated to those guys who don't play professional baseball. Uh, I will admit that I'm the first guy to go to the paper in the morning and see how these guys did, did or if they're in the minor leagues, you know, I grab the sporting news and and baseball in America and collegiate baseball, you know, I got those at my fingertips and I know where these guys are and what team they're playing on, how they're doing. I'm guilty of that, I know, but at the same time, our program is, you know, our number one thing is that our kids graduate. And though a lot of them don't, you know, still your goal is when you go out to recruit a, a, a kid and when you talk to the parents, you know, you tell them, hey, it's my number one goal and I hope it's yours and I hope it's your son's goal is to graduate from Washington State University and go out and be a, you know, a credible alumnus. And, uh, and of course the kids, I don't know that, or they can't, it's too far away for them to think about. Right now they're thinking about, hey, I'm going to go there and I'm going to play good and somebody's going to sign me and all these great things are going to happen. So it's hard for them to say my number one goal until they get out there. And you can see the transition, you know, you see them get out there in their junior year and their senior year and they start seeing some goals are being met and some that they're trying to fight for and they maybe they meet a girl and they get married and, they, and then they got their common goals and and so they do end up graduating but this is that's my, our number one goal in the program is the kid graduates from here as far as uh, I've been asking a few of the players a lot of the former players uh, back at the Legends weekend we asked a whole bunch of them if they had any stories about yourself and, and there's got to be a there's, there's a ton of them out there I know but is there anything that, that uh, maybe you remember it as being a story about yourself that uh, maybe uh, others might not uh, think about right offhand? Well, you know, uh, one of the big, big things was when we played um, uh, Ohio State in, in the World Series, and uh, it's still known as the game in the College World Series annals. Uh, we played them 15 innings, they beat us one to nothing. And <clears throat> the maneuvering in that game uh, that we did uh, was, I thought was, you know, was good you know, to hang with them that long. But we should have won the game. We did have the base loaded in the 12th inning, and nobody out, and we didn't score. We just had a, a tough luck there, and they had a great pitcher over there, and, and uh, uh, so that we we didn't win the game. But um, I remember one guy. There was a kid by the name of Bo Ryan. He was later a, a coach at uh, Louisiana State, and, and was killed in a in an airplane accident. But Bo Ryan was their their quarterback and shortstop, and he was a left-handed hitter, so. I brought in a lefty, and uh, he was he was a he was the right-handed hitter. So I brought I had a lefty out there. So now I'm going to bring in a righty. So I know he's going to bat left-handed, but their bench doesn't know. They think, well, now we're going to bring the righty. Going to put this guy in, but see, he had to change sides. He was right in the clutch, 
kid's name was Ed Fiskler, a guy from up here at Spokane. And I just told Ed, Ed, you just throw the ball as hard as you can right down the middle three times. That's all we need. And he did. He just blew them right by him. One, two, three. And, and so these guys shut up over there in the dugout a little bit after the battle. They didn't think we were quite so dumb. But it's hard to go from one side to the other, especially his dominant side, his right side. And of course, I knew he was going to bat left. And running that right, you know, those guys were getting a big kick out because he walked up there left hand. That coach was going to be surprised. Well, we weren't. We were ready for him and just thought him off. But, uh, Oh, well, there's some of those things, you know. Um, we had a, I think we had a, a kid hit a, a home run. I think a lot of kids probably brought that up uh, to beat UCLA down at Stanford. It was a horrible windstorm that day, and, and we were playing UCLA at Stanford to see who goes to the regionals. And um, the coach come out and said, "Well, I told um, Gary Adams, the coach from UCLA, he said, I told Gary uh, that they're going to hit one out here in right field today. There's no way there'll be some go over left." This is Mark Marks, the Stanford coach, talking. I said, well, that's good to know, you know. So in about the seventh inning, we're behind two runs, and I bring this kid in. He's a freshman. He had a name of Scott O'Farrell, and he, he had hit a double here against Oregon State to put us in, in the championship um, situation. And so he comes up, and lo and behold, he hit, smashes one to deep right. And, of course, I know the wind's going to catch it, and they're going to make the catch up against the fence, and we're going to be beaten. But no, the good Lord just kept it going, and finally it dropped just over the fence. And we won the ball game. We we got to go to the regionals, and uh, that was a great thrill. And actually, the guy that came in, I got a kid by the name of Snyder, came in after that and just shut uh, UCLA down the next two innings, and we won the ball game. That was a, a great win. I thought a great win uh, was here against um, Fullerton State when we went to the World Series in '76. Bob Sherwood, uh, my best pitcher, I thought was was uh, uh, Wilkins. He later pitched a lot in the um, big leagues. And he had a great arm. He went out there. He got bashed the first game. They had to beat us twice. And um, Wilkins got bashed the first game. So it looked pretty dim for us. So I went out there with Sherwood. And he just mixed the speeds and just pecked them uh, apart. And, and uh, just did a great job. We ended up winning that ball game and going to the College World Series. But that was a great, uh, great, great pitching job by Sherwood. And, you know, great for the kids to come back from a pretty good blistering like about 11 to 2 or 3 shot in the first game we come back won the last one 8 to 5 and that did it but there have been a lot of those those things you know that uh, have been a thrill to me as, as a coach and uh, you know to see these kids go out and do a good job somewhere you know my one of my favorite guys that I don't think anybody <laughs> denies that or cares is uh, uh, Dr. John O'Rourke he's a doctor over in Seattle and uh, uh, you know, the, what he's done with his life and with his uh, family, you know, is, is great. You know, a lot of the kids have Manny Perez, you know, up in Yakima. He's a farmer up there. And it, uh, these kids that came back, it was just outstanding having them around here and find out how they were doing. It was real great. As far as uh, I know, one of the big pride and joys that you've had is, is this field here. That's know, right. This complex. That's right. Uh, right. How, how's that? Uh, how's that something that uh, has worked into your? Well, of course, this is a big project. We I, we needed this, and uh, we, I was I was coaching in the Alaska League in the summer, and I wanted to get our our team in it. And they said, well, first place you got to have a good ballpark. Well, uh, what happened? Our ballpark over there was pretty good, but I'm, I wanted I wanted a stadium type like we have here. You know, we just had wooden bleachers and this sort of thing, and it, it just wasn't enough for me. So I. Um, uh, Went to work, you know, they what they did, they uh, lowered the stadium over, had all this dirt, and they put it out here on the golf course. This is the golf course where we sit right now. And uh, uh, they were going to put a track out here. Well, then, of course, one of my standing jokes is, you know, they put a track out here, you know, and some of those Africans, they, they got, you know, six tenths out of kilter or something. They wouldn't run on it for Chappie, so they couldn't do that. So they put the track in there where the baseball field was, and... And Sam Jagley said, well, you can build a ballpark. You just can't raise any money around Pullman. He said, we'll build the field. So they built the, the, the grass field. But all the rest of this is, a lot of it has come right out of 6th Seattle Stadium. Went over and tore the stadium down. We bought lights over here, which we end up selling those and getting different ones. Uh, a lot of this fencing here, the original fencing, it all came out of 6th Stadium. All this you see along the sidelines still does. The flag pole or the, the foul poles and some of these things are still uh, remnants from 6th Stadium. I went over and bought that stadium, transported a lot of it here, brought 5,000 seats over here. They wouldn't let me use them because they were wooden. So we sold those and bought these aluminum ones. But um, uh, the field itself, the university, the university didn't put it in. It's the, the, uh, the Cougar Association put it in. And um, 
but as far as the grandstand goes, and I went out and raised the money for that, for the fencing, that's all ours, and the lights, of course, you know, the, the big expense here was we, you know, what we did outside of the university, and that was put the grandstand in, put the lights in, and, and put the, the, the beautiful fence you see out there right now. I guess he's going to be back here to watch you talk to you real quick. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't, can we do that right now? Oh, sure, no problem. I'm hey, Eileen, is Tommy here with the truck, or? Oh, you brought the gray truck. How can I be here? I don't know, but... <laughs> no, we'll, we'll get enough chairs in there. Okay. If you just wait a minute, I'll get some kids to do it. We're just about ready to break up that drill. Oh, this should have been broken up by this time. Quick as we get through here. Okay, okay. Well, that's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Let's go. We're going to talk just a little bit more. Yeah, just uh, yeah. another two more minutes here. Um, as far as... Uh, talked about having all the stadium and, and all those things put together. How different does it feel to be over here as opposed to having played and, and, and coached some time over? Over you know, the over old there. Bailey yeah. Field? Well, this is a better stadium. I mean, you got some pride in this place. I mean, that over there was a field. You know, uh, when I played here, we played down, well, I guess it's the, uh, uh, the south east corner of that, and then they moved it down, down or the the other end of the field. There was a lake there when I played. Used to hit them out in there for a home run. It was mostly mud, but in the winter time it flooded, and uh, we flooded that place and had an ice rink there. It was one of my jobs here on campus, building this ice rink in the winter time. And then we, um, uh, of course, I coached there. I never played on the field down at that end, and and that field needed a lot of work. And that was one of the reasons Sam Jagovitz thought, well, you know, I'll let Bobo go out and build a ballpark, and we'll. We'll keep the faculty in here close because he was trying to mend fences and build that football field and maneuver things around. So we moved out here, and, and you know it's been a long way. We lost a lot of our foot traffic and this sort of thing at first, but uh, and I don't think we've ever really drawn here quite like we did, except during the older rude years, as we did when we were over right in the middle of campus. It's been harder to coach because you can't use the field house and the, you know in and out one or two guys. It's hard to come clear over here once you're here you're buried or you're over there you got to stay there but the stadium itself you know I still got some plans I got plans of hoping to put some kind of a small roof on it to make it a little bit more uh, you know fan appreciated and, and easier for them a little more comfortable for the fan um, I, I'd hope to improve the press box that needs it and we're trying to build some kind of a hitting facility out here yet these are things I have in my mind yet as even though I won't be the coach Maybe I'll have more time to work on these things. I mean, they can all be done. You got to get permission, and they all cost money. That's the big thing, just like this did. You know, people thought I was crazy that I'm going to put lights in here, but you know, we got five hundred thousand dollars worth of lights in this place. And the stadium, the, the stadium right there is about two hundred fifty thousand bucks just in those grandstands. And you know, people thought I was crazy when I started this. I called Sam Jankovich when he said, "Sam, Sam, I'm." We're going to build a new stadium. Would you mind if I buy six Seattle Stadium, bring it over there? Said, You're crazy, Bobo. I said, oh, no, that's what I want to do. I want to go down here. So I, I really, it was the transportation problem got awful tough, but we did bring a lot of stuff over here, and, and we did a lot of it in here. We sold a lot of it to make money to do some of these other things. And I, one of the best things I like about this ballpark is what we call Century One, which is just over the back here. It's, I felt about five years ago I just didn't want to leave here and had leave nothing. So that's how that started. The idea did, and then one summer uh, I built that uh, basically by myself. Coach Brosnan came in the last month and did a lot of work with me on the on the concrete work. But uh, I had some players here that summer. We had a Cougar, uh, Palouse Cougar baseball team. They all worked on it, and uh, I think it's a pretty good memorial for Cougar baseball down there. And uh, I'm I'm pretty proud of that too. It's had a lot of fantastic support from the community, and it's. Oh, yeah. Helped you accomplish a lot of things. Uh, one of my greatest thrills was I just had a heart heart operation in Spokane. It was winter time, January. I come out here, and, and right over there, I just like it was yesterday. I can see these guys. There's about 15 of them. It's just cold as can be. They're over there putting these bleachers together, you know, with their fingers and these cold, miserable bolts. And they were all farmer friends of mine and guys. You know, I never forget that scene as long as I live. And of course, some of those guys have passed on. And, and Dick Wilburn, I remember, was one of them, you know, and, and uh, it's just, uh, uh, it was just great to have those guys, Al Stewart, you know, and these guys have passed on already, and probably some others I don't mention at the moment, but uh, 
these guys are up there just great to see them putting this stadium together for me and I certainly appreciated that as far as uh, a legacy and leaving one behind how do you how do you want people to remember you 30 years down the road from now well I don't know I'd, I'd hope the stadium here could still be here 30 years from now you know we might have to do a little repair work on it but I'm sure they won't build a new one so you know, hopefully the stadium is still here and be remembered for that and the fence re one and, and uh, uh, people have asked me that, you know, what do you want to be rem remembered by? And I don't know, I've always just wanted to be a good neighbor. And somebody wrote in from over in Everett, Washington, said, well, that, you are a good neighbor. You, you fulfilled your goal if that's what you wanted to be. But, um, you know, I, w I wanted to, to win some ball games. I wanted to take the team to the World Series, you know. I've, I haven't done that as many times as you want to. It's, it's not tough, I mean, it's not easy recruiting to Pullman, but uh, with this facility, if we can keep it going, you got to keep improving. Other people keep coming. You see, we've set a standard here, really, and uh, in the Northwest for baseball stadiums. But we just got to keep working on this. And you can't, you know, sit down. Other people are going to pass you. So um, I hope to keep working on this, and uh, this would be the thing I'd like to remember that this stadium is a good stadium, and it helped Cougar baseball. Okay. Fantastic. Now okay. Hey, Cubs, let's bring those screens, pitchers. You guys come over, bring some screens. Let's go. Pick it up a little bit.